All right. In this video, I want to get all cliche and talk about love. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because uh, on my 30-day band here from Facebook, I've been more focused on MeWe because I don't know if they're actually going to shut down my Facebook account. So, I've been on MeWe and getting into some of the forums and somebody posted something about love and I decided to read the article. And, you know, it's the same stuff we as Christians talk about, you know, I do the same thing, but something kind of clicked while I was reading it. And it was basically saying that what was the unloving thing was arguing with other Christians and calling names, you know, calling each other names. And I thought that that's what you're actually going to say is unloving, arguing and calling each other names. I was like, I don't see that as unloving. It can become unloving, yes, but it just, it, it kind of irked me because I was like, we talk about love all the time, but we don't actually talk about how to love, how to actually get this love and to express it, and what are things that are actually not loving, right? Because we, we talk about some of the things of, that uh, love is, but we don't get into a lot of detail about it, and we don't get in a lot of detail about what love is not, right? So that's what I want to get into in this video. Of course, the article brings this up right here, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we know that charity is love. The same word that is translated as charity here is also translated as love at the end of the book of Corinthians, or the letter of Corinthians, in which it's actually translated as love. And the word is agape. And this is a good example of agape love. Jesus' life is a good example of agape love. It's a, a self-sacrificing, giving love which is why they use charity to get you to understand that this is a selfless giving love, right? Because part of it says here, even though I give all my goods to feed the poor and even give my body to be burned if I don't have charity, and you would think that is charity, right? Uh, it's because this is a deep love. That's what it's trying to get to you is it's a giving love, right? And it's talking about gifts of the spirits here. Uh, I suppose you can pause it and read this for yourself if you feel the need. Uh, but I know a lot of us have gone over it quite a bit. And if I read it, I know I'm going to go over things. So I'm just going to skim some things about how it talks about. Uh, you may have the gift to speak in different tongues or different languages. And even the language of angels. But if you don't have love, you're just a noisemaker. Right? And you could have the gift of prophecy that know the upcoming future. And you could have the knowledge uh, and understanding of the mysteries of the Bible. And you've got all this knowledge. You even have faith. Faith that you could remove mountains. But if you don't have love, it's all meaningless. Love is what matters. Because even at the end of uh, the Sermon of the Mount in Matthew which is what I want to get into here, it tells us something very interesting. Some Christians may find it shocking, but it, it's something that I think we should all focus on here. And at the end here, the Sermon on the Mount, it says, you know, beware of false prophets, right? You know, people coming in sheep's clothing, right? You judge them by their fruit. And we think of their fruit as their being nice and kind and generous and even charitable, where they give to the poor with their money and their time. They do all these things, right? But you need to judge them by the fruit of the Spirit, right? Right? That's something else I can bring up. Now, through the Spirit is you've got joy and happiness 
and love just pouring out of you, right? That is the fruit of the Spirit. But anyway, it says here at verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But what about, you know, calling on the Lord and you, you know, you'll be saved. And it says, But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in, in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will refresh unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. And this is lawlessness. And if you go to Matthew chapter 24, which you know what, I'll do that to show what this iniquity is tied to. Uh, I want to come back here. That's why I'm opening up a whole new tab here. So I believe it's 24. And Jesus tells us that. Uh, Got to skim here for a second. I know it's pretty close to the beginning. Famines. Okay, and right here, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, right? He's talking about the future. And iniquity means lawlessness, and the law is to love God with all your being, you know, everything you got, and to love your fellow man as yourself, right? So, because of iniquity, lawlessness, the love of many shall wax cold because, you know, the law is done. People aren't obeying it, don't even care about it. It's just tossed in the wind. And love waxes cold, but you notice that it has an actual connection again to false prophets shall arise and deceive many. Right? Come back here. What do we get? False prophets. And what happens? There's many people who are calling Jesus Lord, Lord, but they're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven because there's a lot of people who are religious leaders, just like the Pharisees and Sadducees, who aren't saved. They don't have any faith in Jesus. Because a lot of people say love, love, you know, love others, love, love. How do you love? The truth is you can't. You can't love like God loves. You can't love like the Bible requires. The only way you can do that is faith in Jesus and accepting Jesus. Then you can get the Spirit, and that Spirit will work in you and change you. Then you can really truly see God and to see His beauty and His love, and that will start to change you, and you'll start to be able to actually, in a way, I guess, reflect His love to others, because it's not actually yours. You're taking God's love, and you're living it. You're expressing it. So... It becomes your love, but you get it from God. You know, where, uh, where it says that uh, we love him because he first loved us. Because we wouldn't love him if he didn't love us. It all comes from him. So, that's what I really want to get into that point about you need to get into the word. Get into prayer. And just reach out to others and this love from the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit will produce in you. And I suppose I should bring that up as well, right? That makes some sense. Because the Spirit is what produces the love. You get it from God. It, it doesn't come from you. You can't force the love. You can't fake this love, right? So let's, you know, let's show us a little bit of respect there and capitalize Spirit. Right here, Galatians 5.22. You know, first thing it says there, you see it, right? Love. And I might go to uh, the Strong's Concordance thing to show you that it's agape. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Right? So, 
let's just quickly go to the Strongs just to show you that this is the Greek agape because Greek have many words for love and this is the strongest agape love goodwill this is like the closest thing we can get to Jesus love right so these people here that are calling Jesus Lord Lord this is why you can't trust in men you can't trust in your church organization you got to trust in God because it's the Holy Spirit that is going to teach you and guide you which is something I guess I should bring up as well right I didn't quite have this much prepared because I didn't think I was gonna go this deep but here we go right because the whole point is like how do you love you love by getting close to the source of love which is God so excuse me you need no man to teach you I know it's in first John I just can't remember quite the verse first John there we go 227 so let's go here Let's go to the King James 2.27. This uh, first epistle of John really got me when I first started reading. I would read it over and over and over. And this is what really stood out to me. That I can just go straight to God. I don't need to go to a church. I don't need to listen to a pastor. I'm not saying that's evil or wrong to do. I'm saying it's not needed right uh, it says here these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you but the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you and ye need not that any man teach you but the same anointing teaches you all things and is truth and is no lie and even as it hath taught you ye shall abide in him right this is the comforter you're anointed with the Holy Spirit you're wondering you know it doesn't say the Holy Spirit you're anointed with this you believe in Jesus you got faith you pray you ask for this you got it and that's showing how you're saved you got the Holy Spirit with you it teaches you all these things it produces the fruit of the Spirit here right here all right and here we got in Matthew 24 talking about the future false prophets coming you know wolves in sheep's clothing so they're calling themselves Christians and they're deceiving many and basically uh, using iniquity lawlessness to basically destroy the love of the church and this is the same thing he was teaching at the end of the Sermon of the Mount there's many who are going to call him Lord, Lord, and they're prophesying, they're casting out devils, right? And they're doing many wonderful works. So they may be healing people, giving in charity, they're doing all these great things, but it's just a show, right? You really want to know somebody's fruit, you actually got to get to know them. You got to hang out with them and maybe even live with them. And then you can see if they're actually producing love joy peace long suffering gentleness faith meekness temperance and these such things because if not they could just be acting you know that's exactly what jesus called the pharisees and sadducees hypocrites and it's from the greek word that means actors because they're just acting they know they are full of pardon my language shit but they don't care because it's a way of living for them and it says somewhere else in the scriptures from Paul, which I guess I'll bring up as well, that talks about how these people, these wolves in sheep clothing, make merchandise of you. So let's put that in because I'm not quite sure. I think it's in one of the Corinthians. Nope. Make merchandise of you whose judgment... Why is this in Peter? Let's let's just put of you and see if something else comes up with it. 
because there might be more than one place. This, I remember it's Paul saying this. Isaiah, Samuel, Matthew, Second Peter. In their greed, they will make up clever lies to get they show. You know what? Let's open this one up. We'll have to go with Peter because I don't remember the verse. And when you put it in the phrase of the King James in this uh, Bible hub, it doesn't always come up. You got to put it in the new style of English or the modern style of English, and then you might get it. But I don't know how it's worded in the new Bibles. I all the my memorizing is of the King James, so when I type it in here, it doesn't always come up because it might not say merchandise, right? They might use a different word. They make money off of you or something. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, it, was it verse 3? Here we go. Yeah, and many follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And a lot of these people will speak evil of someone like me and the things that I say and people like me. And through covetousness, they shall frame, with framed words make merchandise of you. They're making money off of you. Whose judgment now of long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Right? So these people are all describing the same ones. The people who are like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious leaders. They know that they don't believe what they're saying, but they know other people do. So they get you suckered in and paying the ties to them and supporting them but you don't realize what the ties are actually for the ties are for the body there's no separation between the clergy and the laity which means those who are considered priests or pastors and bishops and deacons and elders and everybody else they're equal to you they might have a special role because somebody is the eyes, but you may be the little toe in the body of Christ. But you're just as important to Jesus. And you're going to get the same uh, treatment and, be and benefit as the eye would. Or the ear. Or anything like that. Uh, but anyway. At the end here, we, we see here in chapter 2 of Acts, the Holy Spirit is poured out, right? And what happens down here? They're, they're following in the Apostles' Doctrine, right? And it says, And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the Apostles. And all that belie believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now right here is a good example of love. We talk about love, but who is going to do this? No, this is evil communism. This is evil socialism. You know, when the government has control in a communist style or socialist style, now that ain't right. There's no government leaders here. There's no religious leaders here. These people are like fathers and they are like older brothers who are the ones that everybody look up to. But they don't have any rule over anybody else. So this tithe, they gave everything. But what was it for? Was it for the apostles? You know, the high up disciples? The bishops, deacons, pastors, teachers? No. It was for everyone. But you see that in churches today? No, you do not. They take the money for the clergy, for them. That's all the ties for them, not for you. You're not part of that. But they'll tell you, on the other side of their forked tongue, that you know, you're part of the church, you're part of the body, but you don't get any benefit from the ties. None whatsoever. It's for them. What are you What are you insane? If they're going to get money for you or anybody else who needs it, maybe for the community, what are they going to do? Oh, let's do some bingo. Let's do a raffle. Let's do a bake sale. Uh, you know, we'll cook up something or we'll, we'll call in a food drive, bring in stuff. You know, they'll get something, some money or some goods from somebody else, but not from the church itself. 
there might be a rare case where this is different, but this is the general rule that the church keeps all the ties for the just for its leadership and not for any of its members. This the spirit was poured out and they produced the fruit of the spirit, which is to actually be of one mind and see the singleness of heart. They loved each other as themselves. They are following the law. They're actually loving, right? Not like us. We're not doing this. This is a good example right here. And we're not like that at all. But we'll talk about love. We'll talk about love until we're blue in the face. Right? But to actually do it and to really explain how to, and, you know, how can this love come forth from me when I am a, pardon my French again, a piece of shit and a horrible sinner where I would sooner spit in God's face than to love anybody else, right? If I'm being honest with myself, how I lived in the past, it isn't until God actually drew me to him and I got to see his beauty in his love that it made the change where I actually want that love. I want to not only feel it, I want to express it. I want to live it. And I pray for the patience for me and for you, all who hear this, the patience to be patient with God and his work on us. You know, we're the clay, he's the potter. He'll make us into his image in his due time. I just try to stay on that potter's wheel and in his hands. But anyway, let's uh, get more into this here about love, what it is and what it isn't. Because here, like I said, you can pause and you learn about love. In Galatians 5, you learn about fruit of the Spirit, which ties into this because part of it is love. Uh, this is just a more deep uh, detail of love and how it's more important than, you know, being able to see the future, uh, being able to understand the Bible completely. Because there's a lot of people who, again, part of my French, are dumb shits. You may be one of them, but that's fine. Because you might be more loving than me or people who are way smarter than me, way more knowledgeable than the Bible than the both of us. And they can know they know exactly what's coming because they study the Bible and God showed them what's coming. And they might be able to speak many languages, even the tongue of angels, right? And they got faith to just walk out and do things, but they don't really have love for God or their fellow man. But someone like you, I don't want to insult you. I don't know you, but I, I'm just going to take you as an example, you know, have some humble pie here. And just say, you're the dumbest Christian that ever walked the earth. Right? You don't know jack shit about the Bible. You don't know what's coming. You don't know anything. But that's fine. You know why? Because you've probably got more love than any other Christian. You love God with everything you got, which is more than a lot of Christians will do. Because it's definitely not everything they got. And you love your fellow man as yourself. You actually give the shirt off your back, the food off your plate to somebody else because you're full of the Spirit. You've got fruit of the Spirit. You've got the most important fruit, love. And that puts you above everybody else. Not that there's a hierarchy, but... It just, in my eyes, you're better. I'm sure in God's eyes, too. But anyway, some people, you know, too smart for their own good. And I'm not saying you shouldn't seek knowledge in getting into the Word and being able to grasp and understand it. Definitely should. But most importantly is love. Love, 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 love. You get that from the Spirit. You get that by faith in Jesus, by getting your ass saved. And a lot of these preachers, these church organizations, are run by these wolves. 
that aren't saved that are just using it to take advantage and make merchandise of you. And they are working iniquity. Even though they're doing a great thing, they're working iniquity, which we can see makes love wax cold. All right? I know in Matthew 7 and 24, Jesus is also talking to the Jews, not to Christians. But this is affecting Christians today as well. Uh, but anyway, to sum this up, I'm going to go over a couple things that I actually replied to this article about. And the first point is to actually have that love. You need to focus on Jesus. Focus on God and his love towards you. Focus on Jesus' life and everything he put up with and went through for you. His forgiveness. Right? Because in this article, it was making it seem as though the unloving thing was arguing and name-calling. And I was like, what? That's what's getting you all butthurt? Get out of here. Look at Jesus. He was beaten to he didn't even look human anymore. He was humiliated and mocked and scoffed. Treated like, uh, again, shit. And they murdered him. Didn't think anything of him. Yet he said, forgive them. You know, they know not what they do. Forgive them. So, you... Be like Jesus. Someone calls you a dumbass, a prick, even starts cursing at you. Forgive them. They don't realize what they're doing. They're getting into their flesh. They're getting all emotional. They're getting worked up. And sometimes they might be calling you names because there's a reason. Like if someone's calling you a dumbass, maybe you are being a dumbass. Self-reflect. Maybe they're getting worked up because something you're saying or doing is dumb. And they're actually trying to help you out. Because we think of love as, you know, never getting angry and never, you know, being stern. You know what? If your child was trying to stick a fork in the outlet, are you just going to go, hey, please don't do that. Please don't do that. No, oh, you're going to get so, uh, you're going to be all kind and gentle about it. You might get them and go, no, no, no. And you pull them away. Like, hey, what do you think you're doing? And if they think it's funny and they keep doing it, you might have to slap their hand. Put some pain and be like, no. This slapping of your hand hurts, but it's way better than letting you stick your fork in that outlet. Right? You may have to give them a good whooping. They're going to hate you for it. But they're going to learn to stay away from the outlet. Because you know that child may not get it. Thinks you're a jerk for not letting them play in the, with the fork in the outlet. But what you're doing is loving. You're putting in their mind that, hey... That's going to be painful. It's going to be so much worse than what I did to you. Sometimes that's what God does to us. He beats us up in our life because he's protecting us from something that's way worse. You know, the stupid things we say and do get us into so much, so much trouble that when God chastises us and we get mad about it and like, what the hell is all this? It, chances are he, he's protecting us, right? And just think about this. God flooded the earth. Right? You're going to say that's unloving? He was protecting his creation from the corruption that Satan brought into it with his seed and with his sin. Right? He even let foreign nations come in and kill and destroy his people, Israel, out of love, to discipline them. It's better to let that happen than their souls to be destroyed, right? We, we get this thing all mixed up about love, like it's all rainbows and fairy tales, art and glitter and all this crap. No, sometimes love is a whooping. And a scolding, putting a time out. All right? Just look at Jesus. He, he made a whip and he beat money changers in the temple. He beat them. 
That was pretty much one of the last things he did that finally made it where the religious leaders were going to kill him because he, he attacked the money. Right? It's all about the money. Like he was saying, these people want the money. They make merchandise of you. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. And he messed with the money. So they had to get rid of him. You know, money's the root of all evil. You can't serve God and money. That's what they were doing. They're all a bunch of Judases. All of them. Anyway. You can also look at Jesus referring to people as pigs and dogs. Right here in the Sermon of the Mount. Not sure if chapter 5, 6, or 7. But in here, he refers to people as pigs and dogs to not to give you pearls. You know, your truth to them. Because they pigs and dogs... Some people are like that. They don't care about the truth. And they're going to stamp all over the truth. And they're going to stamp all over you, too. Because they don't care. You, you can try it, like, here on the internet. You give your truth to some guy, some gal. They don't care. They like rolling around in the mud. And they'll roll around in the mud in you, and they don't care about what the truth is. They'll just keep going and going and arguing and changing subjects and doing all these ad hominem attacks and... Doing all these things just to have fun with you because their life sucks that much. That's the only joy they got is getting a reaction out of you. Thinking it's funny that you think they give a shit. Alright? They're pigs and they're dogs. Jesus said don't give your pearls to them. So he's calling people names. He called the religious leaders wolves in sheep's clothing. He called them hypocrites. Actors that they're fake. He called them serpent children of the devil. Called them murderers and liars. Because that's what they are. And then Jesus is going to stop the wine press when he comes back. He's going to stamp all over everybody. The unsaved, that is. The enemies of God. Eventually, he's going to throw the wicked in the fire. That's supposed to be some unloving thing. Like, people got love mixed up. They got all mixed up. So, love, right? What about some of the things love is not? I'm sure we can get into a few other things, but to really... Get clear on it. Love is not never getting angry. Like Jesus. Righteous anger. Whip the money changes, right? Sometimes you get angry and you might get loud. You start to get a little bit emotional, right? Oh, all of a sudden I'm not loving because I actually have feelings and they come out in the way I express them. Right? That's not unloving. You're just soft. You're either soft or you don't like the truth. Love is not staying quiet to keep the peace. Oh, I don't want to cause a commotion. I don't want to disagree with everybody. You know, keep unity, right? But love is not unity with lies and errors, the works of darkness, you know? That's not love. Love is not enabling lies and sinful behavior. So just making excuses and whatnot. Encouraging it. Maybe even subtly doing so, because that's how the serpent works. Love is not withholding the truth and the rod. No, the truth has to be said. What, are you just going to stay quiet? And the rod, because sometimes you got to be rude. you got to be in someone's face. You, sometimes you got to get loud. You know, you got to reach deep into their soul, which somewhere in the back of their mind or in some little pit of their heart, and you need to pull it out to the forefront. Love is not going along to get along. That's just not how it is. That's not love. 
Jesus is an example of all of this. So, yeah, I'm sure we can think of other things that love is not. We can get into what love is. But ultimately, we need to focus and pray for it because we can't get this love out of ourselves. And if we try doing that, we're just going to end up becoming like a Pharisee or Sadducees that just fake it. You know, we're going to be actors, hypocrites. We're going to be keeping the letter of the law, but we're not actually going to be keeping the spirit of it. You know, outward show, we're inside, we're full of dead men's bones. We're going to first clean the inside of the cup, and then the outside will be clean also. But, uh... Yeah, I think I summed it all up here. So thanks for watching and take care.